17. Delia was tremendously happy. She didn't have to go to school, she didn't have to take the state proficiency test, and she didn't have to worry about reading at all. Between extra double dutch practices, getting their things ready for the hotel trip, and keeping up with all the news reports about the tornado and its damage, there was little time to reflect on the future beyond the coming weekend. Yolanda recuperated quickly and was thrilled that her picture, along with the twins, not only made the front pages of the Cincinnati Inquirer and the Cincinnati Post newspapers, but would also be featured in People magazine as well. Thursday night, the team checked in to the Weston Hotel along with several other teams from around the country. There are the kids from New York, whispered Yolanda. Stan's pepper steppers. They're really good. Yeah, I remember, Delia answered. South Carolina always has a really good team, too. Isn't that them just getting out of that bus? I hope that cute dude who can jump so fast comes this year. He is so fine, Yolanda said with a grin. Don't you think you have enough trouble with the twins in love with you? Delia asked, laughing. Who said anything about love? I just like to be admired, Yolanda responded. But the Tollivers did say they would come on Saturday to watch us. Good. You know, one of the teams last year had twin boys on its doubles team. They were dynamite. You think the Tollivers might want to try to jump double dutch with us? Who knows, Yolanda shrugged and looked up at Bamani, who handed her a room key. Let's check out the room. I want to see what's on HBO. You've got HBO at home, Randy teased as he tossed his bag on his shoulder. It's different in a hotel room, Yolanda reasoned. My mother isn't here to tell me to turn it off. Yolanda and Delia, carrying more than they would ever need for two days, pushed the elevator button for the seventh floor. Misty and Charlene shared the room next to them on one side. And Bamani and Randy were across the hall. The rest of the team and a few parents took most of the other rooms on that floor. The room was cool and perfect, the way their rooms at home would never be. This is the life, Yolanda sighed as she bounced on the bed, the remote control in her hand. Hey, I've got a taste for some candy, Delia said after she unpacked her things. I think I'm going down to the lobby to get some Twizzlers or Twix. Want something? Yeah, bring me a Hershey's bar. It's sweet and smooth and perfectly chocolate. Just like me, Yolanda answered. That bump on your head might have been more serious than they thought, Delia teased. You're tripping. She took the key and walked down the long carpeted hall to the elevator. In the lobby, she looked around, saw the little shop where candy was sold, then noticed another bus of double dutch teams unloading. She wandered outside to the loading area to see where this new group was from. The Canadian team, Delia realized. She remembered them. They were good. Several of their teams took first place last year. This was going to be the bomb, she thought excitedly. The queen bees are going to blow it up this year. Delia watched them unload, waving at the girls she remembered from last year, knowing they would be strong comp competitors. Delia looked up and down the busy street. She loved being downtown. It was so busy and full of life. It didn't even seem like the same city she lived in, she thought. She wandered out to the curb, gazing at the announcements for rock concerts, comedy clubs, and political candidates that had been tacked to the telephone pole there wishing once again that the words would make sense to her. The pole was pocked and gouged with staples and nails and holes from old announcements that had been replaced by new ones. Near the bottom was a typed sheet of white paper with a picture on it that caught her attention. It almost looked like, but it couldn't be. Yes, it looked like Randy's father. Delia gasped. What was Randy's father doing on a poster? She ripped the paper off the pole and gazed at the fuzzy photo in front of her. It was definitely Randy's father, unsmiling and looking a little confused, and a lot thinner than Delia remembered. He looks like a criminal, Delia thought, and was instantly ashamed for thinking it. What did it say? Tears of angry frustration filled her eyes. She really needed to be able to read this. She could read some of the smaller words, but not enough to patch together a sentence to figure out what the flyer said. So this is why Randy had acted so funny when she'd asked him about his father, and why he'd asked to borrow the money. His dad was in trouble. She wondered if he was running from the law, if he'd committed some terrible crime and was hiding from the police. No wonder Randy has been stressed. 
Delia checked a couple of the other telephone poles, but she saw no other papers like the one she held in her trembling hand. For a moment, she considered throwing it away, but she didn't know what to do. Show Randy? But she felt he already knew his dad was in trouble. That's why he'd been acting so weird. If she told Bamani or her mother, they'd have to call the police. Taking deep breaths to calm her beating heart, she decided the best thing to do was to help Randy keep it a secret. Randy would be glad that she was such a good friend, Delia thought shakily. Satisfied with her decision, Delia folded the flyer several times and stuffed it into the pocket of her shorts. She headed back to the elevator, remembered the candy, bought several bars, and returned to the room. What took you so long, Yolanda asked. I'm up here about to die from lack of chocolate in my bloodstream. The doctors told me that chocolate is good for my concussion. A uh, long line, Delia said, as she touched the folded paper in her pocket. Oh, and the Canadian team is here. They're looking good. Not as good as us, Yolanda said, as she licked her candy bar. Why do you do that, Delia asked, making a face of disgust. Because it freaks you out, Yo-Yo grinned. Yeah, Bamani, oh hey, Bamani called. He wants a team meeting in 15 minutes. He said we are going to get pizza afterward. Great. You're not going to lick the pizza, too, are you? Delia laughed. Now that's disgusting, Yolanda replied. At the team meeting, Bamani discussed rules and gave them dozens of reminders. Remember to keep your t-shirts tucked in at all times, ladies. Fifteen point deduction if you forget. And don't forget, if you enter the ropes from the right, you must exit on the left. In the compulsories, 30 seconds for singles, 40 for doubles. And make sure those knees come up waist high. Watch out for penalty points and aim for bonus points. Finally, he said with fierce, passionate power in his voice, Double Dutch is a team sport, not an individual one. Each team is only as strong as the rope turners and the jumper or jumpers. Unless all parts of the team are working together like a machine, you will not be successful. He had heard it all many times. But she listened with interest and tried to remember every suggestion that Bamani made. She had learned from past tournaments that sometimes it was the attention to little details that made the difference between first and second place. She tried not to think of the wanted poster hidden in her pocket as she watched Randy in a corner of the room, ironing their team shirts for tomorrow. She knew it was the part of his job he liked the least, but every shirt would be crisp and perfect by morning. As Bamani passed out the pizza, he took the time to tell each girl how special she thought she was, how proud he was to have her on his team, and how proud he would be of her tomorrow, no matter how she scored. Delia and Yolanda smiled as broadly as the kids on the third grade team, because Bamani really went, meant what he said. Double Dutch made them all special. You're sure you're okay to jump tomorrow, Yolanda? Bamani asked for the fifteenth time, as Yolanda and Delia were heading back to their room. Honest, Bamani, I'm okay. My mom took me to the doctor again yesterday, and he said I was fine. You know my mother wouldn't even let me out of the house if she thought I was in any danger. I'm ready. Just relax. Okay. You two get some sleep now. Breakfast is at 7. We have to be at the gym by 8.30 for warm-up, Bamani told them. Delia waved to Randy as they left the room. She wondered again if she should tell him she knew about his dad, but she couldn't. She couldn't embarrass him like that. She couldn't tell, could she tell Yolanda? No, that would be selling out a friend, telling his business to the world. She decided to wait until the tournament was over. Then maybe she could just let him know that if he needed anything, he could count on her. What she probably should do is throw the thing away. He'd never know. She walked slowly behind Yolanda, who never even noticed Delia's frown of confusion.